Hey, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for coming to my session today. Uh, welcome also our lovely virtual attendees. So today we've got a 20 minute beginner level session on Ola's wonderful maintenance solution. So hopefully you'll learn a bit about installing, configuring, and kind of my top five tips for beginners using the solution, how to get the best out of it. So I've been using SQL Server over 20 years, using all of this stuff over 10 years. Uh, Kerio, uh, I've been at Kerio for seven years now. I manage the dedicated support team. Uh, we work on analytic solutions, data platform. We've got a stand outside. Uh, and you can find out all about uh, what Kerio is doing. And they've let me come here today to speak. OK, please send me feedback. I'll put the slide up at the end. Uh, and we'll crack on, because we've got only 20 minutes. So please hold questions to the end if you can. Grab me outside. I'll answer anything and everything that I possibly can about the solution. OK, so to set the scene, we love Ola. So the solution has been a real kind of godsend to the DBA community for the last kind of 14 plus years. Uh, and this whole presentation is done with complete respect to Ola. Uh, it's purely understanding the solution, how to get the best out of it. Out of the box, it works beautifully. Um, but we're going to show you some tricks and tips and how to get the best out of it. I've never had an issue with the solution at all. It's been fantastic over the years. Ola works very hard. It's beautifully coded. Um, the issues you tend to see is people not understanding it or not using it in the right way. So this is with complete respect to Ola, because I'm not sure if he's at the conference or not, so I need to get that up front. OK, so for those new to Ola, um, the solution gives you a very comprehensive maintenance solution for your indexes, and by nature of that, your stats, your backups, and your integrity checks. So you can think of CheckDB. So all the core DBA activities you need to put onto an instance. And back in the day, everyone would write their own scripts. Uh, but basically, Ola does it better. The scripts are really good, very comprehensive. It handles everything you can throw at it. Um, and it's free, and it's a great contribution to the community. So you go to ola.halendon.com. That gives you everything. It's very comprehensive. There's loads of options in the solution. Out of the box, it works just fine. But that gives you everything you could possibly need to know. OK, just a quick tip on installing. So when you go to the Ola website, on the front page, you've got a download for maintenance solution to SQL. That's the one-stop script for everything you could possibly need. So simply download that, open it up. At the very top, you've got a set of parameters to change. So where do you want it installed? So it's going to give you a table, a few stored procs, a bunch of jobs. And then you've got a few configure options. You want the jobs created, because that's the key part of this. Where do you want your backups to go? Otherwise, you go to SQL Server default. Same with output files. Cleanup time is how many hours to start cleaning up your backups after successful backup. So you can configure that all up front, run the script. It'll create all the objects, all the jobs. All you have to do then is schedule the jobs, and you're good to go. Okay. When a new version comes out, simply run the same set of parameters, turn off the create job option uh, so it doesn't mess with what you've set up, and it will simply update the code, and it gets updated once or twice a year. So you check on the site. That will give you everything you need. OK, troubleshooting. So when one of your other jobs fails, um, you've got kind of two main methods. The, me the main and best method is for every time it runs, it'll output a text file. So you get a plain text file, output every time it ex executes. That gives you all the commands that were run, gives you the full text output. So say you had a check DB fail, that's going to give you all the information about the corruption to start your investigation. It also gives you the commands itself, so you can run those manually whilst you're validating your testing. You also get a command log table by default. That has one row per execution. And this is really useful as a high-level kind of queryable table uh, where you can do things like reporting on execution time. So you can see how, how your execution time increases or decreases over time. And so that table and the text files work in tandem beautifully. Uh, my top tip on the text files is order by created date, not modified date when you're looking for it, because that will map to the start time of the job rather than the end time. It makes it much easier to find your text file. So nice and easy to troubleshoot. It's all there for you. Start with the text files, and that will lead you on the path to working out what went wrong. OK, so we'll start with our top five tips. So 
every job that runs, every sort of procedure that runs has an at execute parameter. By default, that's a yes, so it's going to run the commands. What's really useful when you're getting familiar with a solution is to run it with execute equals n to see what it's going to do before it does it. Okay? So what it looks like is this. So if we run a fairly standard command, execute n, it's going to tell you what, when, how, everything is done with the parameters. So like this, if this is a backup command, it's going to try and create a subdirectory. It's going to run a backup. It's going to show you the backup option, so checksum, no compression. It's going to verify. So I know exactly what it's going to do before it goes and does it. Okay? You don't do this all the time. This is you've got to get confidence in the solution, basically. And good though it is, you have to remember, this is still ultimately a script you've downloaded from the internet, which you're going to run in your production systems. So you can't blame Ola or the internet or anyone else if it's not doing what you expect it to do. Uh, you need to do a bit of validation yourself understand what it's doing. Um, it's the same with maintenance plans, where you, you've got to understand what it's going to run off and do. You don't, you don't necessarily know. So it's good validation. Also great for demos. Thank you, Ola. Uh, so yeah, try this out and see what it's going to do. Okay, get familiar with it. You can learn along the way. You'll see what options are going to be in the commands. Okay, so you can learn to configure the solution that way. OK, this is one where personal preferences vary. So by default, the index maintenance doesn't touch your stats. So just as a very quick ref refresher, so stats are a very small summary of your data. It's what the optimizer uses to construct your, your execution plan. And they're not intrinsically linked. They need refreshing as the data changes. But both Ola and Microsoft want you to rely on auto-update, which is on my default. So at a certain trigger point, when you get data changes, auto update will kick in. It used to be really high, so again, like see pre 2016, over 20% of your data had to change in an index. Now it's much better. Now it's got a kind of square root formula in there. It's much lower, but I'm fairly old school. I like to maintain stats on a regular basis. I want to minimize auto update kicking in during the day. Because if you run a query, the optimizer says it's stats out of date, it's going to update the stats there and then before it runs your query. You can turn async on, but it's still going to be doing stats update during your workload, which I don't necessarily want. So I'd like to maintain the stats. And that's all built into Ola. It's just by default, it's not turned on. So we're turning on update stats and modified stats. It solves the problem out of the box. Uh, I like to be a little bit empirical with this, so I want to see what it's doing. So I have three tables with one index each. OK, so we've got three half million row tables, one with no data changes and low fragmentation, two with lots of data changes, uh, one with high frag and one with low frag. Okay. You can also see here the update level. So previously, it would take over 100,000 rows. Now it's kind of 22,000, which is much better. So out of the box, the index optimized job. So it's going to do a rebuild on the index with high fragmentation. But that's all it's going to do. It's not going to touch my other index, which had low fragmentation, but very high data changes. Okay? So all I would recommend you do is add these two parameters in, run that, and now we'll see that. Okay, we're still going to get the rebuild. And with the rebuild, you get a full scan stats update for free. So that's fine. But it's also now going to update the stats on my other index, the one with low fragmentation, but high data change. It's going to give that a bit of love. And the index with no changes, it's going to ignore, which is absolutely what I want it to do. Okay? So a nice, easy change. So if you want the solution to maintain your, stats, maintain your stats as well as fragmentation, simply add those two in, and it's done straight away for you. Okay, in line with that, obviously I'm quite enthusiastic about statistics and accurate ones. So it's understanding a little bit about the code and how it's going to work. So the solution will iterate through your database. It's going to pick up index one. It's going to say, do I need to do some defrag work on this? And then do I need to do stats work? So like if it's going to do a reorg for the defragmentation, it's going to do, want to do stats as well. So do the defragmentation, it'll do the stats, then it'll go into the next index, and so on and so forth. The problem you can get, and I've seen this lots of times, if you've got a short maintenance window, very messy indexes, you're not going to get all the way through before it's going to stop. 
and I'd rather have every index with good stats, and I'll take the hit on a bit of fragmentation rather than some of the indexes beautifully maintained for fragmentation of stats, and some unloved. So I'd rather have stats up front. So I will typically split the default job into two steps. I'll do stats first, because that'll be relatively quick, because it's a sample update, and then I'll move on to defragmentation second, because if that has to get cut off early, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'd rather have the good stats. And again, very easy with the solution. All you've got to do is just tweak. So for a stats only job, I will change these two defaults to null. So it's basically saying don't do any defragmentation work. I'll have the ones we've just seen on the stats. So that's going to give me some stats updates. So it's going to update whether stats are high, frag high, and the other one. Okay, so give, that'll give me all the stats updates I need. Then secondary step, fragmentation only. So to be explicit, making sure that update stats is off. This is just going to do fragmentation for me. Okay, so it's going to do the rebuild and nothing else. Again, depends how you feel about the whole stats fragmentation argument and how big your maintenance window is. If you've got the biggest maintenance window in the world and you don't mind, just run it, by, run it with the stats turned on and that'll do it all for you. If you've got to juggle maintenance windows, you've got to make a judgment call, do you want stats or do you want it combined? And over the days, it'll work itself out. I'd always rather have the stats up front if I possibly can. Okay, this is one of the, the bigger gotchas, which I see. So the index maintenance by default uses the fairly standard approach of 5%, 30%. So under five fragmentation, do nothing. Five to 30, treat it as medium. Above 30, treat it as high. The, when you go into the store procedure um, in the maintenance solution, the defaults, if you've got medium frag, so between five and 30, it's gonna try and do a reorg. If it can't do that, it will try and do a rebuild online. If it can't do that, it will do an offline rebuild. So it's gonna try one, then the other, then the next one. Higher fragmentation, it will go straight for online. If you can't do that, it will do an offline. Okay. You wouldn't typically do a reorg on a highly fragmented index just because the overhead's too high on that. But the danger is, with these defaults, is if you can't do an online rebuild, you can get into a bit of trouble with that, and I have seen that. So on my main instance here, one developer edition, it's essentially enterprise, so that's got all the good stuff. So when we run the index maintenance, it's gonna give me a rebuild online, okay? Online rebuild, beautiful, it's gonna create a secondary index, make that all nice and pretty, swap it in, minimal locking, um, whilst it's doing that, just what I want. But if I'm using the default settings, it's so in my resplendent pink uh, instance here. This is a standard edition. Same database, same command. It's going to give me an offline rebuild. And what this is going to do, if I'm not expecting it, is it's going to go and rebuild an index on possibly a large table, which could take a while. Whilst that's running, you're not going to have access to the table. Okay. So if you haven't really got much of a maintenance window, and you're running these commands, just be, just be careful of that. And be, just be aware of what that's gonna do to your table and the read and write access to that, okay? But it's very, again, it's very easy to fix. Uh, what you typically do, if you're running standard and I didn't have a, a clean maintenance window, I changed that fragmentation high to be just index reorg, because um, that's always online, uh, even on all the editions. And even on the medium, I probably have an index reorg as the only option for it to run. So I don't want it trying to do anything, anything clever. Okay, so just be just be careful of that. And yes. Okay, and the last point is be careful of how long this is going to run. Uh, some of the biggest problems I see is you get a either a new DBA or a very unloved server. So the server's been sat there for years. No one's given it any attention. They install Ola, they schedule the jobs, and then they walk away. This can cause you problems, depending on, again, maintenance window is always very key. Uh, you want to have some control as to how long it's going to take. So you've got a time limit option, which isn't set by default, as so you can set that, it's a number of minutes. And that's on the check DB and the index maintenance. So check DB and backups tend to be fairly predictable um, in terms of how long they're going to run. They'll typically run longer over time. But index maintenance varies wildly. So depending on the number of updates in a given day, 
uh, it's going to do more or less work. Okay. So what you want to make do is make sure that your index maintenance isn't going to run into a heavy production workload. So you've probably got a clear idea of when maintenance should stop, and if you don't, uh, you really need to understand that. So what the time limit option does is it's going to run first maintenance command, and then at the end of that command, it's going to check, am I at the time limit? If you are, it's going to very nicely stop. Otherwise, it's going to carry on to the next command. The issue you can run into is a command could take hours. If you're doing a rebuild on a massive index, you could be sat there for two, three, four hours whilst it's doing that. And because it's single-threaded, it's not going to be checking, should I stop or not? So you can easily overrun past where you need to be. So I'd always recommend uh, you implement a kill job as a safety net. Okay? So this is just a secondary job you'd create. It's going to run at the, the end of your maintenance window. And all it's going to do is going to say, are the maintenance jobs still running? And if they are, it's going to kill them. Okay? That's your hard stop against your the solution overrunning. Okay? I'd still recommend use time limit as well. That's a nice way of it stopping. So it's going to stop between commands. It's not going to be killing an active command. Um, whereas you need to, I'll always do both, time limit and kill job, because what you can do is you can go and install the solution on a server. It's going to go smashing into your production workload, cause lots of issues, and people are going to blame the solution or blame the DBA. Okay? So just be careful. And even things like introducing index maintenance on a server that hasn't seen much love, start it high. Don't go with 5 and 30. You could start with 95% and 80. So don't try and do everything at once, and then work your way back down. See what the run times are like. Okay? Start with stats, then move on to fragmentation. And make it nice and easy. Okay? Obviously, backups and check DB, absolutely key. For index maintenance, just be cautious with how you're introducing that. Okay, because it, and then day by day, you can increase it until it's back, kind of under control, fragmentations all being sorted out, and it's all good. Okay? And that has brought us to the end of our quick tour through Ola solution. Uh, are there any questions at all? Do you recommend to disable auto update statistics on the database? when using index optimizers uh, parameter update statistics? Yes, the question is, uh, should we turn off auto-update stats uh, if we're doing it this way? Uh, I'll put my hands up. I used to do this kind of 20 years ago when I was a far more eager uh, DBA. I'd say always leave them on unless you've got a very valid reason to leave them off. They're there for a reason. Um, it's your good safety net. Okay? But... Yeah, it it's, depends on your solution, but it's, it's there. You want to keep stats under control. Stats are absolutely key. For my money, they're more key than the fragmentation issue. So I'd always have, always have auto-create, auto-update. That's going to give you a good base layer. I also like to manually run it out of hours, so that, that reduces how often that's going to kick in during the day uh, because I don't want any unexpected delays on a query. Because remember, when you run a query, if it's out of date, it's going to update the stats right then and there before it executes your query. Okay? I want to minimize that. You can't, if someone comes in and does massive data changes and you've got auto-update on, uh, that's going to happen. But it's to protect your plans and have a good execution. Okay, so it's a good thing. Unless you've got a very good reason, I'd always run create, auto-create, auto-update, um, or probably auto-async as well. And that brings us to time. So out of respect for Mr. Ozar at the back, uh, I want to fin finish on time. So thanks very much for coming. Please send me some feedback. Grab me if you've got any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them. Great. Thank you.